All right, how's it going, guys? We are back. And I have just started a thing of tin alloy here. Well, I got the setting set for it. Um, I do want to point out that for tin alloy, if you look at the combination smelting, it needs wrought iron and tin. And that makes tin alloy, one for one. And it'll pour at 12.58. I am using iron. I am not pre-making wrought iron. So therefore, I can't set the temperature to 12.58. I have to set the temperature to 2011. So that is what I have done. It's set to 2011. You can see the tin is already... Uh, melted if I was doing this in a regular crucible you guys have seen me do it plenty of times I would do the iron wait till it turns to rot then I would turn it off and throw the tin in but since I'm automating it here uh, they both go in at the same time and I just set the pour temperature to 2011 um, and the reason why I'm doing that is because we're going to work on solar panels today now, Greg has recently added a germanium solar panel, which would be really nice if it wasn't for the fact that it takes T6 circuits. Um, the aluminum and the copper cables, meh. Nah. But the T6 circuit is something we can't currently do. Um, so we have to do the silicon version, which means that we have to purify silicon. And this is where I have an issue with Greg's second solar panel here is the fact that these are twice as powerful as the original. But once you get to circuits, well, once you get the machinery to make circuits, instead of doing them by hand like I have to do currently, Making T6 circuits is not that big of a problem. Uh, you just need an ultimate circuit, which means you need ultimate parts, which is platinum, signalium, and tiny crystalline redstone alloy, which is just silicon and redstone uh, one for one. It's not that difficult to get the uh, red alloy. If we look at it here, um, trying to find, just, I'll type the thing. Because you got to remember, there's two different ones. You have red alloy ingot, and you have um, the redstone alloy. This is what we actually need for that, not the red alloy, which is copper and four redstone infused into one ingot. This is red alloy, which is silicon and redstone one to one. And again, it, the redstone infuses the silicon, so you still only get one out of it. But once you can do the silicon... Doing the red silicon is not an issue whatsoever, and that's what we're going to work on today, is purifying silicon. Um, I do want to show you a couple things. We did have a live stream, which I'll put a card up in the corner for, where we did a bunch of automating. We now have auto shutoff on all of these machines, so we don't have to worry about wrenching that on and off i still am working off of our ethanol drum here because i haven't uh brought the fuel in that's a fuel drum not an ethanol drum but anyways we're still working off a drum for now and i have automated our polarizer and Magnetic separator, we're going to look at if what we're going to do recipe-wise with the magnetic separator. Uh, but we need this for 
polarizing our rods for engines and things. I have also automated our LV electrolyzer that's at 42 EU. So we can start automating all the things into it other than just what's coming in um, this, which we are full of hydrogen, which is an awesome thing to be full of. I have no complaints there. Also, centrifuge has moved down and it is now automated and we are full up on latex, which is awesome. You can see down here, we're making more rubber all the time. We also went ahead and put the gibolo meter on over here to turn off our boiler if our steam cracker is out of butane, which it currently is. <clears throat> so if for some reason it can't output steam, it'll automatically uh, turn it off. And I made a new elevator so I don't have to go over there, all the way over there to come up here anymore. We also put our automatic shutoffs on our plastic maker. And we've managed to get up to 394 plastic. I do need to run the, uh, the butane from outside into here. Um, so we can run that some more made up a whole bunch more circuits obviously uh we got the smelter for the tin so it'll turn off we got the smelter and the crystallizer turned off we're making another big batch of buels right now we're up to five of them and i had the hardest time with this um I want to point this out in case anybody else has this. If you go back and watch the uh, very beginning of the stream, the first thing I started with was trying to automate this electrolyzer for our aluminum. Aluminum to aluminum. And I had the hardest time because it would not work. And I've done this a million times. Um, and I knew I was doing it right, but I did a little bit of fiddling with it to try to figure out exactly what was going on and come to find out for some reason I had to wrench out the electrolyzer. I don't know if there was something that happened in this chunk that it didn't agree with it or what, but both of these electrolyzers had to be reset to work with the redstone. Because um, if we pop out this... There is a possible sensor right there, which I should have put into, yeah, here, let me hit A, because I use it a lot. Um, this is the possible sensor. Basically, it just gives you a redstone signal if there is or isn't a recipe available in here to run. So it'll only turn, it'll only give a redstone signal if all the things are here. If this was missing, it wouldn't give a redstone signal. If it actually gets the 10th one, then it'll give a redstone signal. And for some reason, it was giving a redstone signal if it had stuff or not. It was really weird. Also, if it's full, it also will not give a redstone signal because it's not possible to run a recipe at that time. Very simple uh, sensor, works great for this. And then on the dynamo here, we have these, there's one on top and there's one on bottom. They are basic uh, redstone covers that will put redstone through. There's one called accept and one called emit. And it basically just allows redstone to be passed through a block. As long as the cover can go on that block, it'll work. Um, it doesn't have to be from north to south. It can be east to west. It can be north to west. Whatever. And whatever side you put them on, 
that's what it will do. And then there's just a simple redstone machine switch on there. And that's the same thing we did with the, um, the magnetic separator here. It's got the exact same thing, except there's a possible sensor on the top of the magnetic separator and the bottom of the polarizer with an accept on top and bottom of the magnet and an emit back to the dynamo with an accept on it and emit on it to the redstone there. So you can even double them up. And this is basically an OR sensor or an OR gate. So if this one or this one needs to run, it'll turn on. Um, we also got this electrolyzer done and ready to go. Um, we just need to automate the on off of the smelters and lighting the burning mixer, which is what we're working on the silicon for today. Um, same with the tentalium setup over here, which I really want to get running. Um, so we can make THC. We've got auto switches on there and there. I can't put one on here because this is a liquid burning box. Auto switches only work for gas. They do not work for liquid. I will have to do a piston shut off for this one. And we'll go over that when I actually do it. This one as well has been done with the possible sensor. So it'll... Oh, no. I didn't do this one. I need to do this one. Okay. When we get back to doing this one once I get the stuff, I'll get that one done. I forgot that one. And we also did our sulfur trioxide to sulfur, or sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide and to um, hydrochloric acid, which is why we had so much of that um, potassium bisulfite that needed to run is because we ran the hell out of this. And it's really weird that there's no water in there. Um, I guess I definitely need to do a live stream and get the water thing dealt with. I haven't done anything with these yet. Um, I need to, but I haven't. We're going to, I, uh, actually forgot. So, um, again, we needed an igniter for that too. So. Enough running my mouth about what we already did in the past. Let's go look at what we're doing today. So we need some coal coke. I've already got some quartz. Quartz is silicon dioxide. I got three stacks of that. If we look at the quartz here in the crucible, it's one to one to silicon dioxide at 1986 and if we look at silicon dioxide in the crucible it is three silicon dioxide to one carbon one cold coke equals one carbon at 1986 it will turn into silicon so that's what we need to do this is the only way to do it and the only major issue with this is the fact that Silicon is a very low weight. 86 kilograms is the weight of the quartz. The silicon is probably pretty close. And when you think of that compared to iron and steel, which is 874, that means we basically need the same type of setup, but it's going to go way faster. And I have had issues with this in the past, even doing it with a Invar burning box that it will um, overheat. So we're going to take a look at it manually today. 
Uh, you will notice I have my bee suit on. We're also trying to capture this bee. And once I get it to where I can capture her, I will explain this whole thing we have set up here that XAR um, had me set up. That's his invention. But for right now, we're going to throw on the bee suit. And we're going to attempt to purify some silicon today. So, one, two, three, one of these. And we're going to. Okay, that one didn't like it. Uh, where's my matchbox? Oh, it's right there. There we go. Now, this should heat up rather quickly. And speaking of... Uh, oh, I don't have my backpack on. I've been taking my backpack off and switching it over to the redstone one. And I forgot to put either of them on today. Uh, this should already be set, right? Okay, that one's set. That'll work. Because I want that to automatically pour this out when it's done. I'm going to turn this down to 23. Uh, let's do 2250. Alright, and I need to drop this in as quickly as possible. And also, because of the weight, it's not going to dump the temperature as much because it doesn't have as much weight that it has to heat back up. So, we're going to see just how fast this can run. Okay. One, two, three... And if it pours that just fine, which it's looking like it is. Maybe last time I did this, I did it with a better burning box because it, yeah, it poured that just fine. Okay, one, two, three. One of them. As long as that drops out before this melts, we're okay. It drops. There's plenty of time. I'm going to try to get it in there faster this time. Just to make sure. Eh. That looks like it should work. All right, well, then if that's the case, we can basically use our iron smelter here. We can do basically the same setup, or even the bronze one here. We need three to one. We could really just use our bronze setup. Let's try it here. Put three of these in, one of those, and we drop, this should be the three, which it is, okay, we'll throw the rest of that in that one, and put the rest of the cold coke in there, and we need this to pour at... 19 something. Um, let's see exactly what that is. Silicon is 1986. All right, so 19. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave that to pour at. 1960 because the carbon's not going to go before that 
and the 60 is the number I use for the others. And then we're going to jack this up to 22, which should be fine. And now we'll turn that on. And it doesn't matter that it has four because it'll pour only as one. Take a look and see. There's our tin alloy, which is beautiful to see. So I'm going to let that go for a minute. We're going to work on this. I need to get plates. I also need to get rods. Um, because I need to make a uh machine casing here. So we're just gonna do this. I could use the lathe, but then I'd end up with um dust that I'd have to re-smelt so we're just going to do it this way and pour it manually i could actually and i may end up doing that um we've got two stacks coming out i may wait until we get about another stack done so we have about a half a stack and a half and then switch the lever here because if i switch this lever now that's going to go over to the rods, so we now should get rods out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it now so I can keep an eye on it. Yeah, there we go. We've got silicon. And, yeah, it doesn't look like it's overheating, so that looks like that'll work just fine. And we can get rid of that because I don't need that anymore. And we can make our tin alloy casing here. Oh, by the way, I did make my first titanium gold for a wrench. Titanium gold is about five times more um, powerful or durable. Powerful. Um, it's 500. It's 5120 durability. So 512,000 durability um, versus the ultimate that we were using which is 1024 so it's way more durable than the ultimate so rather than use our ultimate which i need for pipes we're using titanium gold now granted i have to get some uh titanium to do that but oh i did also forget i'm very forgetful we also automated up from here all of that room tile and illuminant into the shredder. So once I turn the shredder back on, all of that will get processed and that'll give us more room tile that we can run. I also have some room tile we went mining for that I need to process. I'm just not in any hurry to turn all that on at the moment because we don't really need it uh, let's get this in here and we're gonna make a bunch of wires I need two of them like this all right and now, if we come over here, and we get into this, we grab four of those, which we now have our silicon quest done. Um, by the way, there has been a complete redo. Um, I'm trying to remember his name at the moment. Um, guy in our Discord has taken our scripts and tried to make them Lapinator, that's his name. Uh, tried to make them a little bit cleaner. Um, I'm going to try when our when my internet's not being such a pain in the ass to do a live stream that'll basically show 
all the different changes that are in there. Um, where is the solar? Oh, wait a minute. I completely forgot. I'm an idiot. These are crystalline silicon plates, not silicon plates. I need to make a buell for this. These are regular silicon plates. All right. So making them as plates doesn't really matter because we've got to melt all this down anyways. Ah, you see how much I make, sil make uh, solar panels in this mod? I, they're no fun. Solar is boring. I know some people love it because it's a place and forget it. Never have to really think about it. I don't like that. I like to have to think about it. Solar's too easy. Alright, so we're going to throw all this in here. And I guess I'm turning on the shredder. Um, I've been thinking about the ore processing here, if I want to automate it or not. Or if I want to change it over to engines or not instead of boilers. Um... I did that on the server and I ended up running into a problem where I ran out of oil and therefore I ran out of fuel and when I ran out of fuel I couldn't process anything. Um, so I'm not sure that I want to do that. Um, at least right now. I think think I'll do it for the shredder, but I'm not sure. But the other ones, um, they're probably going to stay on boilers. Um, mainly because once they start running, they need to run for a long time. I don't start them and run them just a little bit. The shredder, though, it does all kinds of different things. So there's chances, like right now, that I need it to run. Um, so that one I can see having turn on and off but the other ones I think I will leave them also I wanted to show you I automated this as well it has a possible sensor there are pistons underneath here um, for some reason I forgot to do that one and that one with the grass I'll deal with that properly later um, we're not using them so it doesn't matter but as soon as that is out it'll turn these off and we are now on to running uh, light oil because we ran out of the regular oil. I still have not found a Greg Tech oil, but we do have a Buildcraft one there and two Buildcraft ones there. Um, that's not a Buildcraft. That's a dot I didn't hit. Um, so... We're going to go and set up pumping these soon so we can send them over here. But the light oil gives us more gas. Gas is the main thing that we're kind of worried about because we need the uh, butane for plastics and stuff. So I am going to shred all of this stuff down and... As soon as the germanium is done, I will run the silicon buell. By the way, it's exactly the same thing as the uh, germanium. We just need the helium, argon, or krypton, neon, um, or radon, and a tiny piece of silicon, and the rest of it in molten 3.88 units. And it'll make us a silicon buell. We can use these as well for um, circuits. So since we now know we can run it just fine over there, we may start doing that instead of germanium. Um, just because we can use germanium for those higher end solar, solar panels eventually. Um, I don't know any other reason to, to need germanium. That I can think of off hand. Um, 
but I will let this run and we'll get that done and then that'll give us everything we need for making our solar panel and then we just need to make the igniter which the igniter is fairly simple we'll be using the ulv one uh, they do go all the way up to iv i really don't know any reason to use any of them other than ulv um because it's doing the exact same job so you don't really need the other the only reason to do these is if you needed to light something that was next to where you had iv power um you wouldn't have to transform it down and it's only a one click so it's not taking that much power but for me most of the time if i'm using the igniter i don't have power there i'm using gas or liquid so therefore i just use a solar panel and yes it's kind of a waste of the solar because it's just gonna sit there um but it's literally a tin alloy machine casing uh steel bolts and two lead cables and that makes your igniter the only thing that changes in this is the casing and the cables go up it's always the steel bolts even all the way up here still steel bolts and whatever and so i will make that in the solar panel in the next one and we can then start automating stuff like our coke ovens here we can have them turn on with the igniter we can start automating our um titanium from rutile over here because we'll be able to light the burning mixer itself we'll be able to ignite the smeltery all those different things so that's what we'll do in the next one once i get uh this buell done so we can make these solar panels anyways hope you guys enjoyed again i'll leave a card up in the corner to that live stream if you want to see um why we made what we did that kind of stuff for the automation we did around here have a good one take it easy and i will see you next time